In a culture where logic and reason have been discarded, the truth of Holy Mother Church is still very much alive. Fill your soul with the truth of the Holy Catholic faith. Get your premium account at churchmilitant.tv today and discover the truth. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from Utrecht in the Netherlands, right in front of the statue of St. Willy Brot, who brought the faith to the Netherlands here nearly 1,200 years ago. The Netherlands now stands as a warning to the Church Universal. This is our future if things don't change and change quickly. Because when we talk about a smaller church, well, here it is, 2%, just 2% of Catholics in this country actually attend Mass. What has happened here now gives a whole new meaning to the phrase epic fail. The Protestant triumph of the 16th century has translated into the triumph of secularism in the 20th and 21st and has all but defeated the church here in Holland. This is the diabolical recipe for destruction of the church and it was first trotted out here in the Netherlands back in the 1960s. As some kindly Dutch Catholics were sharing with us over dinner the other evening, every abuse and error, every special case that was granted in the contemporary church has its roots right here in the Netherlands. From spiritually insane theology to Holy Communion in the hand, if it's present in your parish, diocese, or Catholic school, it probably began right here. Those within the church who sought her destruction have succeeded beyond any level they even thought possible. Remember, 98% of Catholics here never attend Mass. But the past can't be undone. All we have is the present to change the future. So the question is this, and it doesn't only apply to the Netherlands. The question is, what is the plan? The errors that exploded here and brought down the church are the exact same errors all over the church, all over the world. Spiritual time bombs that keep going off from the never-ending liturgical abuses to the homosexual subculture in the clergy to the weak need response to modernism on the part of bishops to the continual acceptance of dissidents in the religious life who are welcomed open-armed on the Catholic speaking circuit to the often and lazy attitude of so much clock-punching professional Catholic bureaucrats to a lack or even loss of faith on the part of so many Catholic educators. What is the plan to end all of this, to combat it? The Church is divinely established by our Blessed Lord and structured in such a way so that responsibility, ultimately, is in the hands of the bishops. They don't get to enjoy the rights of authority without the consequent obligations that attend that authority. So they are the only ones, at the end of the day, who can end this madness officially, or at least greatly curtail it. They have the ability to put wayward priests on notice. In fact, they have the duty to do so, and they will answer to Almighty God for not doing it just for their own soul, not just for their own soul, but for that of the priest and the people that he influences. They have the duty to make sure the faith is being passed on in the schools, in the parishes, etc. They have the duty to teach, govern, and sanctify. So, what's the plan? Where is it? Did the laity not get the memo? Is it top secret or classified? Do most of the bishops get out of bed every morning motivated by a love of souls and the faith? Do they bring to the chancery every day a desire communicated to their staff to advance the authentic faith and bring converts to it? If so, what's the plan? For the past month and a half, we've largely been on the road in New Zealand, Australia, England, the Netherlands, and even for a brief few days, a quick stop over back home in the United States. And everywhere we go, over dinner and quiet, intimate conversations with clergy, clergy, mind you, we keep hearing the same thing. Too many of the bishops simply no longer believe the faith. They run the church like a business. They appoint people, priests and laity, who share their decidedly non-spiritual view of the church, only focusing on keeping the bureaucracy functioning. It's funny that this would be the observation of so many clergy that we talk to because it aligns perfectly with what Pope Francis keeps saying. Just last week, he said, quote, the men and women of the church who are careerists and social climbers who use people, the church, their brothers and sisters, whom they should be serving as a springboard for their own personal interests and ambitions are doing great harm to the church, end quote. The answer to the question, where is the plan, is simple. There is no plan. 
It doesn't exist because those in charge, in many cases, see no reason for a plan because they see no crisis. They see no crisis because they have no supernatural vision, because they have no supernatural faith remaining. To them, the church is an institution and nothing more, a vehicle for self-promotion. The faith oftentimes gets in the way of that, but from their point of view, it must be tolerated here and there. This is why orthodoxy is fought against so strongly, and the faithful, the peasant Catholics, are beaten down, and that includes the peasant Catholic clergy. The presence of such people, if they get too much of a stronghold, too much of a voice, will end up unseating prideful leaders. Love of the faith and a loss of supernatural faith cannot coexist in the same church because love is incompatible with abandonment. And that is what has happened. Too many leaders all over the church have abandoned the sheep and gone out after their own interests. They play the role, but their hearts are far from God and his truth. Here in Holland, we've had the chance to meet with two bishops and numerous priests who are all saying the same thing. The church is in dire straits and it's owing to a lack of faith. One bishop even told us after Mass that things are so bad that plans are in the works to shut down another 50% of the parishes, and that on top of a near total disaster that is already present. Things have long since spun out of control in the Netherlands. All that, all that can be done now is to try to maintain and contain the damage as the few remaining Catholics wake up to the crisis and begin fighting back. The Netherlands is the future of the church in places like America, and don't be fooled into saying, oh, that could never happen here in the United States. It already is happening there. Parishes are being closed by the hundreds, and Catholics are abandoning the faith in droves. They're just cultural and historical circumstances masking the problem in the United States. One mask is the large Hispanic immigration that keeps propping up the numbers on the rolls. The other mask is that the Protestant revolt through which the church has had to try and survive here, which started over 400 years ago and has very deep roots, that's not the case in America. America is barely half that old. But the secularist poison that is nat the natural byproduct of the Protestant heresy is quickly catching up in the United States. The Netherlands was the first country to accept gay marriage. Ten of the 50 states in America now do and more are in the pipeline, not to mention what the Supreme Court may rule next month. The Netherlands has one of the most liberal abortion laws in the world, and so does America. Euthanasia is a common fact of life here and is already growing in acceptance in the United States and will continue as Obamacare advances. But more than the cultural carnage is the spiritual disaster that befalls all these souls, and perhaps the biggest disaster of all is that there is no real will, meaning zeal, and certainly no plan to fight it on the part of so many bishops around the world. When your own clergy starts saying that you have lost your faith, that you no longer possess supernatural faith, what else can be said? We need to pray ardently for the bishops, my fellow Catholics, in earnest. Offer your rosaries for them. Satan has been after them since the Last Supper when he demanded that our Lord give them over to him so he could sift them like wheat. Our blessed Lord leaned over to Peter and told him that he must strengthen his brothers. Let us add our poor prayers to Peter's efforts and help turn this disaster around. Reporting from Utrecht in the Netherlands, this is Michael Voris for churchmilitant.tv. God love you. Education of the faith starts at home, and churchmilitant.tv is here to help. Please consider signing up your family for a churchmilitant.tv premium account for just $10 a month. Your family deserves the truth.